Hello YouTube, Sidekick here in my trusty Mirage F1CE with another little uh, weapons tutorial video. So far in this series we've covered basic iron bombing and we've also taken a look at using rockets and we also took a look at uh, using laser guided bombs briefly. So if you haven't checked out the earlier videos in this series you might want to do that. Uh, they'll give you a good idea of, of things like using the weapons panel and stuff like that. I'm not going to go over that in this video. Now, I've also uh, looked at high drag bombing in the past. Uh, there's several videos on my site, uh, including one whole series where we look at the whole idea of, of how it works um, and how to figure out what uh, parameters to use for, the, for your bombing attack. So I'm not going to go through that. Um, and, but let me just review quickly the point of high drag bombing, and I'll just use some footage from an earlier video here. The point of high drag bombing is to allow you to make a low level, uh, fairly level, attack run uh, instead of a dive bombing attack. Now this would have been referred to uh, back in the Second World War, you might see it referred to as glide bombing, but there's really nothing remotely gliding about it because you're generally making it at very high speed. Uh, the reason that we now use high drag bombs, uh, unlike in the Second World War, is that it resolves the problem that this method used to cause in having the bombs actually damage the aircraft that was dropping them. So if, uh, if in DCS or even in other simulators you've ever had to make sure you set your bombs uh, to be delayed fused because you didn't want to damage yourself when you're dropping them at low level, that's the problem we're getting around by actually using high drag bombs. At any rate, the basic idea is to get established uh, at an altitude and speed that are correct for the site depression that you have chosen, and normally this will be given to you, although in DCS maybe you figure it out on your own. Now ideally you want to be basically level, but with the F1 we have a little bit of a problem with that. There is actually, because the view over the nose is a little limited, you can actually only get a site depression, I'm, I'm experimenting with it here, but really you can only get the whole site on your HUD if you use about a 160 mil site depression. Uh, the problem with that is that I have not found a set of level flight parameters, altitude and speed, where I can only use a site depression of 160. So uh, we're going to have to do things a little bit differently in the F1, but we'll talk about that more when we get out to the range right now. We're just uh, getting ourselves taken off here. So, as I was saying, I have not found a set of parameters that will work for level flight with 160 mil depression for the F1 using the SAMPS 250 parachute retarded high drag bombs, which is what we're using today. So, for the F1, we're going to have to be in a slight dive in order to actually be able to see the target when we pickle. But the principle's not going to be any different than what we've used before. We're basically going to set ourselves up to cross the target going at a given speed and a given altitude, and when the target is under the pipper at the given site depression, we're going to pickle and we're going to hit the target. So, for the record, using the Mirage F1 and the SAMPS 250 parachute retarded bombs, I have found that going about uh, 500 knots at 500 feet, and with a slight dive angle, let's call it between 5 and 10, so let's call it 7.5 degrees, with a site depression of 160 mils, which is effectively the maximum site depression you can use, that those parameters are the ones that get you pretty close to hitting the target. Now, uh, the issue, of course, honestly, is less about what numbers to use and more about how to achieve them while traveling at 500 knots and 500 feet off the deck. Uh, so, I have been working on a method that basically works for me. This is not an approved method, didn't find it in any publication. If you're aware of a standard way of doing this that uh, Air Forces use, please uh, definitely let me know in the comments. Or if you have your own way of doing this, uh, definitely uh, let me know in the comments or come to the Discord channel and start a discussion. Because at this point, um, I am just making this up as I go along. I think this works pretty well, but I do want you to know that it's not approved by anybody but me. So I'm going to use a slightly modified version of, of kind of our dive bombing attack. We're going to go back out farther from the target 
it's going to be that white building in the middle of the target area. We're going to roll in. Now we're a bit lower and approaching at a shallower dive angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll in. I'm going to get lined up on the target using the ladder there. Now I'm going to put the target off the top of the glass. So I'm going to tar I'm diving in front of the target. I'm not aiming at the target, I'm trying to get down low before I hit the target. I'm going to use the altimeter there. When the altimeter starts, tape starts rolling on the HUD. I'm going to pull up and I'm going to aim just beyond the target. And then I'm going to wait until I go across the target. And I would have pickled right there. Now, I, I didn't have the master arm on. Uh, I'm going to pretend that that was actually intentional. And that was a dummy run. But anyways, you can see that the basic uh, principle of the attack run. So we're going to dive down in front of the target. We're going to use the fact that the uh, radar altimeter tape starts moving at about 2,000 feet. So that's going to be our cue to start pulling up. And then we're just going to pull up to just beyond the target. Uh, and then we're going to wait till we cross the target. So the trick is going to be figuring out just exactly where to aim just beyond the target to be crossing it at uh, the right speed and altitude. And so um, let's go give that a try and see how we do. So, um, with that in mind, though, it's uh, worth talking a little bit about why we are using high drag bombs. It is tempting to view high drag bombing as being more accurate than dive bombing, uh, especially if you're struggling with accuracy of dive bombing, dropping unguided bombs with only an open sight, and frankly trying to pull off at an altitude that is even moderately survivable in a high threat environment. So it would seem logical that getting close to the target by getting lower would result in a more accurate bomb drop. But here's the thing. If you do this right, you're going to be going 500 feet off the deck, traveling 500 knots. You're not going to see the target for very long. And as you approach the target, you will not only have to manage your speed and altitude, but also pickle at exactly the right time. To put that in perspective, you're going to be traveling 250 meters per second. So, to get within 50 meters of the target, you're going to have a window of a fifth of a second, or 200 milliseconds, in which to pickle. So no, high drag bombing is not necessarily more accurate than dive bombing. Now let's see how accurate we can make it. So, we've come out here, again, a good distance from the target. We're already in a shallow dive. We're kind of just doing a shallow curving descent, although we're going to roll in definitively there once we get on the line we want to be on. Uh, again, we're not too worried about, I'm not too worried about exactly rolling in at exactly the right altitude because the key is to arrive at a point in front of the target where we're under 2,000 feet and then start our pull up. How we get there, um, I don't think that um, the accuracy is very sensitive to that, so I'm not worrying about it too much. So we're rolling in. And once again, I'm going to get the target above the glass, so I know that I'm diving in front of the target. Let's get myself lined up, and I'm going to wait for the radar altimeter tape to start to roll. And when it does, right about there, then I'm going to pull up and pick a point beyond the target, somewhere around there, and pickle. And let's see how we did. Uh, once again, we're using the target information tracking script. There's lots of information about that in previous videos that I've done if you want to know how it works. But it's going to not only give us our accuracy, but it's going to give us our drop parameters. So we just got to wait for it to register here. It's coming up in a sec. Now that looked like we were a little bit long based on my glance back there. And yes, we were a little bit long. Uh, the first bomb was 60 meters over. The second bomb was actually didn't register on the target we were aiming at. It was closer to the, uh, the target beyond that. So, uh, But also notice that we dropped a little low. We were under 500 feet and dropped a little fast. We were at 600 knots. So for the next target, um, we'll try and pick an aim off mark that's going to make us a little higher over the target. And we'll also try and manage our speed a little better so we're not going quite so fast. So return to, the, to return to the discussion about accuracy just briefly, I am going to maintain that with practice dive bombing is always going to be more accurate because you just have more time to see the target, adjust your approach, and crucially, the higher your dive angle, the less sensitive your drop is going to be to the timing of your pickle. So 
uh, if you spend the time to get good at dive bombing, uh, I firmly believe it's always going to be the more accurate way of delivering the bombs. So, why use high drag bombing at all? Well, I would say there's really two reasons. First, uh, because with certain kinds of air defense setups, a low altitude, high speed approach is probably going to be safer than dive bombing. Because just as high drag bombing approach gives you a very limited view of the target, it also gives the defenders in the target area a very limited view of you. So this works when defenders are particularly unprepared or when they don't really know what direction you're coming from. And it also works better uh, when you have particularly high caliber AAA that isn't, doesn't have a rapid rate of fire, so they can't follow you as you go by. Now, the flip side of that is that if you have alert gunners with high rate of fire AAA, or worse, someone with man pads, uh, the advantage of that speed uh, may be negated by the fact that you're flying very close to them. At any rate, reason one to use high drag bombs is that it's basically safer, especially against unprepared targets. Okay, with all that discussion going on, we have managed to get lined up for our second run here. Once again, diving in front of the target, it's over top of the glass. I'm going to wait for the radar tape to start to unwind. Right about there, and then I'm going to pull up. This time I'm going to aim a bit farther. I'm going to aim about at the tree line. About at the tree line, somewhere around there. And pickle. And we'll pull off. See how we do. Okay, those ones are going to be short. So we'll wait for the target information tracking data. But I'm pretty sure that it's going to show that we dropped a little bit high, which is why we were a little bit short. So we'll need to think about ways of adjusting the approach so we're, uh, our altitude's a little lower. So let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely well short, 142 and 100 meters short of the target. We did drop high, uh, 500 feet, and we dropped a little slow as well, uh, all of which, um, you know, meant that the target, the rounds uh, landed short. So we're going to need to figure out uh, an aim-off mark that gets us a little lower over the target. Also, again, going to want to manage that speed and make sure that we are accelerating just a little bit more, probably. Okay, while well, we're getting uh, around here to do uh, another uh, run at the target, let's just quickly uh, talk about the second reason why you might want to be using high drag bombs. And that's because a low-level high-speed approach is going to be more effective against linear targets when you have multiple bombs. And hopefully we'll get a chance to look at that once we've perfected our approach here. Uh, because we are carrying uh, four more bombs on the uh, fuselage pylons, so we have six in total, so we will have a chance to do a nice linear spread, but we got to uh, get our accuracy sorted out here before we do that. So, same procedure as last time, we've come out a ways, and we're just turning back in, already starting a shallow dive. So, by the way, I have been assuming that, it, that uh, most people watching this video are familiar with my previous videos and familiar with the target range we're using. If you're not, there are plenty of videos on my site that talk about a little bit more and talk about sort of my basic approach to iron bombing that I'm taking here. So if this is the first time that you've visited my channel, you may want to go back and look at some of the playlists like the Iron Bomber's Guide to the Galaxy that goes over some of this stuff in more detail. All right, so we're doing our roll-in again. Standard kind of roll-in, we're just uh, putting the lift vector on the target, but we're not really, uh, we're not trying to dive at the target, we're trying to roll out in front of it. We can use that nice, the numbers on the pitch ladder to make sure we're nice and lined up. Uh, it's off the top of the screen, which makes sure that we're diving well in front of the target. And when the radar altimeter starts to unwind, we're going to move the aim uh, up a little bit. And this time I'm going to kind of go for around the stone wall, maybe a little bit beyond that. I'm going to aim a little closer so we end up a little bit lower over the target. Right about there. Alright, let's see how we did. Quick look back there to make sure it looks pretty good this time. We certainly have one uh, bomb on this side of the target. So we went uh, longer than the last drop. Let's see 
what the target information tracking script has to say. Ah, that's much better. Looks like we had one bomb short of the target, one bomb long on the target. So basically we bracketed the target. That's what we wanted. And look, we hit about 500 feet and around 500 knots. So that looks like we've got a pretty good set of parameters and a decent way of getting them. So now, uh, you see, I just enabled the fuselage bombs. And so we're going to go around. We're going to take a look at uh, bombing one of the linear targets. So we're going to go over to the a set of three targets there to the right of the target we've just been bombing and we'll see what effect we can get um, by laying down a strip of high drag bombs in the F1. Now we have no control over the interval in the F1. Uh, it decides what that's going to be. Uh, based on what we're seeing in the target information tracking script, it looks like it's ending up with about 50 meters between bombs. So that means we should be able to uh, hit a target that's somewhere between 250 and 350 meters long. And if I remember rightly, the targets in that set are 25 meter circles that are spaced 100 meters apart. So we should have about a 300 meter target. So that, that actually works out pretty well. Okay, so we're basically going to use the same approach here. We've come back out. I've been using this this uh, little creek and village and tree line here as kind of my uh, my distance marker, so I'm flying uh, south of that. Uh, again, shallow dive, uh, gradual turn here, not trying to do a really dramatic roll in like we would do on a dive bombing attack. Now I know that there's a finger of woods there that points towards uh, this target, because this time it's a little bit more important to get lined up on a line, because we do want to go down the line of targets. It's a little bit more of an issue trying to work that out, but I think we're all right. Once again, we're going to dive in front of the target, so we're going to keep the targets off the top of the glass. We're going to wait for the tape to go live, the altitude tape to go live. And then I'm going to pick an aim-off mark eh, beyond the first circle, maybe around the second circle somewhere in there. And we're just going to try and start our drop on the first target and see how much of it we can cover. So there we go, pulling up. Pulling up when we're a little bit offline, try to get across the line of the targets here, somewhere around there. And let's see how we did. Well, that's pretty gratifying. Uh, I think we dropped a little bit short, uh, to tell you the truth, but still, we certainly managed to cover uh, the target pretty well. And I think that demonstrates why you really want to be using high drag bombs, is for attacking a target like that. Uh, trying to use high drag bombs, uh, you know, with point target efficiency. Um, and there's the target information tracking script for what it's worth. Um, I don't really think it's going to be a high percentage shot. So, anyways, that's uh, my take on using high drag bombs in the F1CE. There's still a lot to learn there, I think. If you have anything you would like to contribute to learning how to use these weapons, please, after you have liked the video and subscribed to the channel, by all means, uh, leave a constructive comment or, as always, come to the Discord channel and let's talk. But for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.